Hi, my name's Kate and we run a harness racing stable here at Jessamy Park. One of the big areas that we're concerned about is the food security in Bacchus Marsh. Currently 150,000 visitors come through Bacchus Marsh each year just because of the homegrown produce that's grown along the Avenue of Honour. As someone once said to me, no one goes to the Latrobe Valley to buy their fresh fruit and veg and we would potentially be another Latrobe Valley. Our strawberry farm is unique here. It's run by two young local lads. They produce 150 tonne of produce a year um, and they're only open for six months of the year, so that's stunning. Tripod farms, they've got 500 acres that they put under production for lettuce, 20 to 30 varieties of lettuce. Further along the avenue, Glenda and Jeff Jones have got a great roadside stall and it's been there for so many years. Our town couldn't afford to lose these people. It just keeps everything ticking over. Everything that's grown on the place goes straight through the roadside stall. We specialise pumpkins, apples, pears, quinces, all the stone fruit, peaches, plums, apricots. Persimmons is now a new thing that we have. We probably have 3,000 come through the stall of a week of a, during the week and pick your own in the area is the biggest attraction that you know really pulls in tourism. Coal dust contains heavy metals, mercury, arsenic, lead, sulphur. In the long run that means that the soil is then affected. We're also very concerned about the water security. Coal mining utilises massive amounts of water. The water here in the town is necessary for the irrigation to keep all our food crops growing. If they cut through aquifers when they're mining, they have to dewater the aquifer, which means they take all the water out and it can't be replenished. Well, we wouldn't survive without irrigation water because Bacchus Marsh is a Mallee rainfall. We're in a rain shadow, so irrigation is a, a very important part. I mean, it's just raw water, it's not treated in any way, so it would need to stay as it is. I live here in Parwin. I've been here for two years. We've got an old house here on the property um, that's over 100 years old. My husband has his own company, producing organic fertiliser, distributing it and uh, manufacturing it. We've moved to the farm so our children can have a lovely, healthy, outdoor lifestyle. All the contaminants that could possibly be put in our soil from the mine just don't give me any hope that I can bring up my children the best possible way. An engineer calculated to get the 1.6 to 2 billion tonnes of coal out of this area, there would be a hole about 8 square kilometres and then you'd be looking at maybe 200 metres deep all the way around. Now as you can see, it's wonderful agricultural land. The 2.5 particulate matter can travel up to 100 kilometres. So potentially from here all the way through to Melbourne can be affected by the coal dust. The concern is how, how big something like this is going to be. Is it a viable proposition to do it? Or, and is it, it's not, you know, is it going to enhance the area? It's not obviously going to enhance the area, but is it, is it economically going to make such a difference? Everyone's as uncertain as I am. Everyone's concerned for their family, their health, their well-being. A coal mine has a buffer zone of 100 metres. So potentially 100 metres from our front door, they could dig if we refuse to surrender our land. We have such a pride with our product. It's Australian made, it's a family business. We've overcome so many hurdles to get to the stage we're at. We don't need this. On the western side of Melbourne, it is a very unique little pocket of ground. Um, agriculturally and scenically, and it's just a, the last remaining little country villagey type place around and I think we need to consider the marsh probably before we consider anything else.